Here's the tools I use to prep my squirrels. Nice sharp knife with a sharpening steel. Catfish pliers to grab the skin. I use canine toenail clippers to cut through the bone. Helps save my knife edge. And I made this little apparatus to help me hold the tails. So when I'm skinning them out, I get an extra set of hands. Nothing fancy. Two by four, one by eight. Connected together with a hinge. Underneath the two before, I staple some hardware cloth to increase the gripping power of these two boards. I put my tail in between the two boards, tighten the boards together with a pair of clamps, and that helps hold the tail for me. And of course, when you finish, you just release the clamps and remove the tail. I use these other two clamps to secure my tool to either my trailer hitch if I'm in the field or my wood bench if I'm at home. First thing I do when I skin my squirrels is I wet him down real good, dip him in a bucket of water, get all that hair and hide wet. It seems to help keep that hair stuck to the skin rather than sticking to your meat. Make my cut right between the anus area and the attachment of the tail to the backbone. Cut through the skin until I get to the point where the tail attaches to the backbone. And I'll use my toenail clippers to cut through that bone to separate that tail from the backbone. Make my cut on down to get that skin separated away from the rest of the carcass. I'll separate that skin out and get it ready to peel out when you start the skinning process. Just separate that skin out just like that. ready to skin him out. I put my tail into my little holding apparatus and secure it with my clamps. That holds the tail for me. You see I've got this connected to, fastened to my uh, trailer hitch. Grab the back legs and just pull upward and that uh, just peels that skin right off the carcass. Again you can see how this little tool helps hold that tail for you. Make it a little easier, a little quicker to get that skin off. Peel him right on off. Take my catfish pliers and pull the skin off the back legs. This is a place where I found that having that hide and hair wet really keeps that hair stuck to the skin rather than wanting to stick to your meat and your carcass. Peel that hide right off back to those back feet. To me, the toenail, to me, the catfish pliers really makes that easy. Now I'm going to use my toenail clippers and just cut through those leg bones to um, separate the skin and the feet and the rest of the carcass. Now we're going to separate the skin from the front legs. And we'll remove the head from the neck. A lot of times I'll use my toenail clippers to cut through the neck bone, but I didn't need to in this case. But I will use my toenail clippers to cut through those front legs. And now I've got him all skinned out and ready to dress him out. You see how that all attaches together to my tool. First step is to cut through the chest wall, through the rib cage, from front to back at the very bottom. Just slice through that. Make a second cut, starting from the chest back to the pelvic area. Make a cut through the stomach muscle, right through the center. And be careful not to cut into the intestines and contaminate your carcass with intestinal contents. You don't want that. Just work away to the back of the carcass, right through the bottom part of the pelvic bone. I did not invent any of these techniques that you see. I learned all these from friends of mine, from YouTube, so forth. These are just some little things that I modified 
to make it go a little quicker, a little easier for me. Kind of start up at the chest and start the windpipe and lungs and just peel out and remove all those internal organs from front to back. Just peel all that out. It just strips right out for you. Again, avoid uh, penetrating or rupturing any of the intestines. You don't want to contaminate your carcass with intestinal contents. I'll spend all day long hunting squirrels, but I don't want to spend all day long cleaning them and dressing them. And that's why I use these little techniques. Just seems to make it go a little faster, a little easier. Next thing I'll do is remove the front legs from the chest wall. Just start at the front and cut through that leg muscle, separating it out from the rib cage. My goal is to have as much meat as possible and as least number of bones as possible. So I'm slicing through that, removing it from the chest wall, getting as much muscle attachment from the chest wall without getting the ribs. Working my way from front to back. Repeat it on the other side. Squirrels have a collarbone. And when you start to remove that front leg, you're going to encounter that collarbone. And I'll just use my toenail clippers to just cut right through that collarbone. And again, it helps. Uh, using those toenail clippers just helps keep my knife edge sharp. I'm not cutting through bones and gristle. I'm just cutting through soft meat. And, and the toenail clippers just help, help preserve my knife edge a little bit. You don't have to use them, but again, that's just a technique I use to help speed things along and keep my knife sharp. Cut through that collarbone and remove that front leg from the rest of the rib cage. Now we're going to do the back legs. We'll start at the pelvic bone. Start right at the front of that bone on the outside part of it. You'll see a little point right there, a little ridge. Start your cut right there. Work around that pelvic bone and you just work your way down to the, the thigh bone. Start at the front of the pelvic bone, cut down, then go back to the back of the pelvic bone. There's another little ridge back there. You can catch on the outside of that ridge right in there and work your way down to the thigh. Cutting that muscle all the way around, away from the pelvic bone. And when I get down to the thigh bone, I don't try to separate out the hip or anything. I just cut through it right there at the attachment and get that back leg off of there. Got as much meat as I can with the least number of bones as possible. And repeat it on the other side. Start that little ridge on the outside of that pelvic bone. Make a cut around. Work your way from front to back. Just cut through that muscle. Get that little ridge at the back of the pelvic bone there. Right in, right in there. Cut the outside of that ridge. Cut through the muscle. Separate that muscle from the pelvic bone. And when I get to the thigh, down to the bone, I'll just take my toenail clippers and cut that right off. And I'm ready to go. Now we'll get down to what I call the squirrel steak. This is a squirrel equivalent of your T-bone, your sirloin, your ribeye. It's that back strap muscle right along the backbone. I'll make two cuts on either side of the ridge of the backbone, back down to the pelvic bone from the chest to the pelvic bone. Cut down like that. There's a surprising amount of meat back here. If you make your cuts right, you can get a lot of meat with no bone at all. Start back at the pelvic bone, that ridge, and then cut underneath that ridge this time till you get underneath it to get down to your backstrap muscle. And then just slice that muscle away from the backbone getting as much muscle off of there as you possibly as you can. Work your way to the front part of the carcass up to the chest. When I get to the rib cage, I'll just cut through behind the ribs. I don't want to get the ribs in there. I just cut the back part of that, get some stomach muscle in there. So I get as much muscle as I can with no ribs. 
can repeat the process on the other side. My favorite way to cook squirrel is to make it in a stew. I'll take squirrel, add some soup vegetables, some cream of mushroom soup, some onion seasoning, and some frozen dumplings, and I'll cook them in the crock pot for 10 or 12 hours. It makes a real tasty stew. The meat is real tender. Great flavor. Minimal prep time. Minimal cook time. And it really makes a great stew. That's my favorite way to do it. You see, I'm just cutting through that back scrap muscle, separating it away from the backbone. Get as much muscle as I can, the least number of bones possible. Get down to the rib cage and then stop there at the rib cage, work the way back to get some of that stomach muscle in there as well. got the squirrel steak all separated out from the rest of the carcass and there you have it you got your steak muscles back legs and front legs you got the maximum amount of meat with a minimum amount of bones but to me this is a quick easy way to prep my squirrel Thanks for watching.